know if that helps you, but it should help to make you understand that don't get overwhelmed with the whole big picture. Get focused on areas, okay? That's going to help. Fins, fins are appendage that require knowledge of function and purpose. So, does anybody know what pelvic fins do? What's, what's their job? What's their operation? Does anybody know? They're the brakes. Okay, when a fish wants to slow down, it brakes. Slows down, wants to turn, wants to move around. If you watch a fish that's static in the water and there's a current, they're always micromanaging their, their pelvic fins. I mean, like micromanaging them. Okay, is that a buoyancy thing? That's what the air bladder's for. You know, they shift the truck muscles to, you know, move the air bladder around. The pelvic fins do that. They also have the longest ligament, the widest ligament, the longest ligament and bone structure, and there's two muscles in there, okay? Why are there two muscles in a pelvic fin? Just one fin? Because they're two different things. How many muscles does your shoulder have? Three, okay, why? Because your shoulder does three things, okay? The upper half of your arm, okay? Bicep, brachial bicep, tricep, okay? You got two heads of the tricep, two heads of the bicep. Okay, if you close the arm, okay, then the muscle contracts, the tricep extends, okay, if you extend the bicep, the tricep closes up, it, it contracts. Same thing with a fish, if a fish is turning like this, this is a concave, okay, this is convex. So you would actually, if you, if you would take this and break it down, you would have less musculature here and more musculature here. Less musculature here, more musculature here. Okay? If you extend your arm, and we measure the bicep, and we measure the width, and we measure the length, when it is extended, that is the information piece, not the muscle. What it is doing is the information piece. When it is extended, that information is correct. But now I've moved it. So now all the information changed. You take a fish, you put it on a bench, and you do a template, and you take tape measures, and you wrap it around there, then what do you do? You skin it out, and you put a curve in the body. All your information changed. It's not the same anymore, okay? So learn to interpret that information a little differently, okay? Or just look at it differently. The body, the lines and the shape, articulation. Okay, in most cases, 80% of the score is usually dorsal forward on a fish. That is true. Not with a northern pike, not with a catfish, but most of it's true. Okay, next one, please. Okay, the top of the head, you know, we talked about this a little bit. Here's this triangular shape up here. Okay, that's, uh, that's an air, that's an air, that's an air receptor, that's an air. These are the actual narrow ports, those are the holes. This is the rhinal cavity, the rhinus cavity. This is the edge of the maxilla, which is right here. When this closes, this tissue right here, this is tissue right here, pushes back, flattens it all back off again, okay? Just a different picture. This one's really dark in here. But nair ports are there, the nares are here. This is the rhinal cavity. Here's the maxilla. When that's extended, this tissue right here all pulls down, <coughs> okay? Next one. Okay, this is a video clip. This is a fish in movement. And I want you to watch a couple things. I want you to watch what the fins do when it's just moving. They move in this little serpentine movement, okay? The pectoral fins will sometimes push way forward. It's a little dark. just hanging out and popping. But look at the pelvic fins, what they do sometimes. He's just breathing, that's all. Fish are no different than we are, they stretch sometimes. Okay, because they're working all the time. Watch the eye, the eye will move and turn sometimes, depending on the position of the fish. If you ever want to get great video of a fish, take a camera lens with you. Put the camera lens up against the glass. Fish are very social, okay? They don't know what the camera lens is, but they think it's an eyeball. I think they think it's an eyeball, because they keep coming over to look at it, okay? 
then I can film them usually. Okay? Again, this is a maxillary bone, which is actually two bones. Okay? That's the maxillary fold that sits right in here. This is an interesting part. So you, you have an eye. Right underneath here, there's a little shadow in here. Sometimes that shadow is the same color as the rest of the head. So if I was to measure the iris, which is nothing more than the color part of the eye, let's say that iris is 12 millimeters. And if I was to measure the orbital opening with the sclera, maybe it's 14. But if you let that head dry out, that's actually the bottom of the orbital opening and the top of the orbital openings here. Now you've got a 20 millimeter orbital opening. You take that 12 millimeter eye that you already measured, you go to put it back in there, it doesn't look like it fits because you didn't rebuild all the anatomy. Okay? Very rarely do I ever see that at shows. Okay? Um, these are the narrow ports themselves. Okay? It's hard, it's a little dark in here, but I wanted to show you the color of the tissue that's in there. It's kind of this weird burnt, fleshy looking kind of color. Does anybody know what it does? You know, people think it's like a nose, but it's not really like a nose. It is in a way, but it's not. So inside there, there's a cavity. It's shaped like a motorcycle tank. One valve opens, one valve closes when they're underwater, okay? What happens is, is there's olfactory bulbs in there that allow them to sense in the water. Some species of fish can sense 2,000 times better than we can, okay? Not a bass, but some species can. There's also little nerve endings that go back to what's called the renal lateral channel, which is part of where the kidney exits out of the gill arch, because the kidney actually goes in two directions on a fish. One is up in the gill arch and one is down by the vent. That renal lateral channel feeds those nerve endings back to the lateral line. Okay? It allows them to sense hurts and ohms in the water. That's how they can identify different bait fish. Okay? So the center of the head okay, consists of eye setting and all the anatomy that relates to the eye function. Um, big, 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 big thing with me to teach people how to set eyes correctly, which means that you have to actually correct the anatomy of a head in order to make the eye set correctly, because part of the correct eye set is the anatomy of the head. It's not just the eye. Okay? The maxillary bone, the soft tissue folds, the operculum, and the bone structure, that's all part of the center of the head. Um, wherever the operculum bones move, wherever the joints move, there's a little bit of wear there, so you'll get a little discoloration. Anytime there's an edge of a bone, it's going to have a different coloration. Like, this is an edge of a bone. It's a different coloration. That's an edge of a bone, different coloration. An edge of a bone, different coloration. So advanced painting to me is when you pick up on stuff like that and you do that, okay? So again, this is soft tissue underneath here. This all shrinks. That's the top of the bone right there, okay? That all shrinks. And people oftentimes, more times than not, that's the shape right here of their maxillary bone. I want that to be the shape of their maxillary bone, okay? Same thing here. This is the fold ridge. Okay? I want to see it on your fish. I want to see that. Okay? Again, the uh, operculum fold. See how there's a coloration difference here? Because it opens and closes all the time and it creates this irritation. Okay? Just broken blood vessels. But I want to see stuff like that. That's, again, that's master's level stuff. Look, in the professional division, I'm happy if you have your craftsmanship done. You know, you're going to get rewarded if you do that. Okay, I'm not looking for, you know, advanced master stuff in a professional division. I'm looking for good craftsmanship, clean work. That's what I'm looking for. Okay? Again, you know, the eye set. This is all part of it. Up top here, it's hard to see this. There's a big tissue mass. I shouldn't call it a big. But there's a tissue mass that sits over the top of the sclera. So when we have students that want to do traditional taxonomy, we're using real heads. We let the head dry. And what we do is we set the eye in there. We set it just a little high from the bottom of the orbital opening. We set it out. It looks really buggy. Okay? Then when we rebuild the top of the head and we put that tissue fold back in there, then we rebuild all this, it looks perfect. Okay? Why? Because that's what the fish does. So we're just replicating the anatomy of what we see. Okay? 
The lower part of the head, the dental bone structure, which is the lower jaw bone, the soft palate tissue, which is this part that sits right underneath here. That's, that's kind of a weird little gimme too. Um, oftentimes when you have a head, it's really flat, but there's this little tissuey part that sits underneath here. Most people make it like level to the dental bone. They're not, there's a little, like a dewlap on a moose, it just kind of hangs down a little bit. Okay, and the bronchostegal rays. The bronchostegal rays have a very distinct shape to them. Okay, and there's some tissuey parts of the front of the bones. Okay, I want to see that all rebuilt. Most people don't rebuild it when I see it concave. When I see it concave, I know you haven't touched it. Okay. Um, so, we take in the bronchostegal rays and the operculum, pull it way open. See this little hole right here? Okay, when the valve, uh, uh, when the bronchostegal valves close and the operculum closes, it comes right down over this hole so you don't see it. But when a mouth is open and a fish is feeding, you will see that, okay? I want to see all this anatomy in here when that mouth is open, okay? Again, here's that tissue, okay? Here's the dental bone right here. Most people bring that tissue right back up to the dental bone and then they take the bronchostegal rays and they pull it back up at the same angle and it all closes up here rather than being open at the bottom, okay? So this is all soft tissue over that dental bone. These joint hinges right here, okay, is all soft tissue. Walleye are the most notorious shrinkers of them all. Okay, you take the skull of a walleye, the head of a walleye, you put a fan on it, you let all that shrink, oh my gosh, the mass that shrinks away is unbelievable. And then you go to rebuild it and you go, that's too much. No, it's probably not, okay? So just pointing that out that there's a lot of tissue structure in there that I wanna see, okay? Again, as these start to close, you can still barely see it there, okay? As it closes all the way, you won't see it at all, but that little hole is still there. I use this picture just to point it out because I want you to see even in a kind of a non-extreme opening, you can still see it, okay? The inside of the mouth, a judge can't award or take away points inside the mouth if it's not visually available, okay? So again, this, these are the maxillas, okay, right here. That's what pulls down and makes those two bones spread apart here, which brings the rhinus down. That's the inside and out. See this piece right here? That's the filamore valve. Okay? You have one on the upper side, one on the lower side. Okay? So, maxillas, okay, the inside of the wall. This part up here is called the vulmar plate, okay, in the esophagus. It's open. Okay, the reality is when a fish opens its mouth and the esophagus is working the way that it should. If you've ever opened up a bass, you ever see water pour out of it? No. You know why? Because they don't ingest water. Okay, they don't. They don't drink like that. Okay, the esophagus can open, but in reality when it's closed, it faces down. You can't even see the back of it. But yet we want to straighten it out so the judges can see it. Open up the mouth sometime or, you know, hold one in a tank and look underwater. Just, you know, hold it in a tank and look under there. You can't see the back of it. You can see the top of it, but you can't see the back of it, okay? This is the tongue, okay? That's it. That's all, okay? This is not tongue, okay? This is the tongue. Okay, see its shape, see its coloration change, okay? Humans want to make the tongue look like a mammal tongue, okay? We, we think it's the same thing. That is the tongue. So when you rebuild the tongue, sure, make the bone plates tissuey, but show me a tongue, okay? Fins, ah. Each fin serves a purpose on the fish, so in, in fisheries biology, you learn two things. So when you're, when you're working at a hatchery and you're looking at a raceway, one of the first things you do in the morning is you watch the fish. You wanna make sure their gait is correct, how they move is correct, okay? Why is that? Because 
something may be wrong with the water, something may be wrong with the oxygen, something may be wrong with the water pressure, the movement through the raceway. So if the gate's wrong, they're going to be wrong. So there's two forms of locomotion. There's swimming locomotion. That's where they don't use their fins. They actually use what's called hydrodynamic displacement. Okay, what is hydrodynamic displacement? Hydro, wet, dynamic displacement is pressure in a concentrated area. Okay, now I can use kinesiology, I can use mechanics, and I can move my arm to make that move at the same speed and the same distance. That's mechanics. Okay, hydrodynamic pressure is what makes a fish move. Okay, sure, they use their fins as appendages to help manipulate the water pressure. But passive locomotion, or what we call social locomotion, is when they use their fins. So if a fish wants to come over and see you, this is what it's going to do. Then it's going to hover, and it's going to back up, it's going to do all these things, because it's trying to use the littlest amount of energy that it can from its body. Okay? Um, this is a video. Okay, we're going to learn something about fins. Go for it. We're going to get a photo bomb here in a second, but notice how the fins move in a serpentine movement. Okay? They just move in a figure eight. Here comes the photo bomb. Here it comes. Hey. Get out of the way. Okay. But even static in the water, when they're static, they still like to hold that figure eight movement. So when folks say to me, well, my fish is turning this way and it's doing this, so I made the fins do this. They're not the front end of a car, okay? They don't have an axle, okay? They, they use water pressure to, to manipulate their, their environment and their movement. The one thing they're going to do is be as efficient in the water as possible, okay? They're not gonna do these big, they're not airplanes, it's not lift, okay? It's, it's hydrodynamic pressure. So if you can put movement, just a figure eight movement into your fin, I'm going to recognize that as proper movement. When they're straight and they're super stiff, I'm not saying that at some point the movement aligns as straight, but boy, I don't ever see them that way. You know, they're all even static, they're moving. Okay, that's just what they do. Okay? All right, peck fin movement. Okay, this is another video clip. Okay, I want you to watch the operation of a static fish. I want you to watch what that peck fin does. Because when they're swimming, you know what the peck fin does? It sucks up against the side of the body. It doesn't sit out like an airplane. Okay? They pull them right up against the side of the body. Okay? Freeze that in a high position if you can for a second. Hmm. Yep, perfect. The top of the attachment, okay? <laughs> where the big ligament knot is, is right underneath that clarethrum bone. The other one sits right here. It makes this triangular shaped muscle, okay? But there's two muscles. There's a top muscle and a bottom muscle because of the operation of the fin. If you actually took the fin and, and pulled back the skin here and exposed the, the tendon shelf, there's no blood here in that tendon shelf. There's bursa fluid. That's the fluid that keeps the ligaments and the tendons kind of, you know, hydrated, moist. There's no blood back there. But if you look at it, there's a separation, which means that the fin is actually two operations, two different things. Okay, pelvic fins do the same thing. The outside of the pelvic fin rolls out like a shoulder, rolls down, rolls out. But the inside of that fin moves across the body like a windshield wiper. You ever pull down on a bass fin, there's like this little skin, like in between your fingers? Why? And so you can't pull it down. Nature said it doesn't belong there. I don't know this to be 100% true, but my sick little twisted mind here says that if you cut the skin in between, all right, I'll tell you the truth, I did it on a cadaver once. Okay, if you cut the skin in between the fingers, you can move the joints, the digits, very, very easily. Okay, it's that webbing that stops that from happening. Okay, same thing with a bass. The webbing on the inside stops it from pulling down. The outside can pull down, but the inside can't, okay? So the inside will move across the body while the outside rolls out, okay? But they both don't pull down at the same time, okay? Play again. Sorry, that's okay. Oh, stop right there, this is perfect. 
Okay? This is subdermal muscle. When the fin pushes up against the body, the, the, the muscle is internal. When the fin is open, part of it is external. There's a pocket right back there. That's important. That's a piece of anatomy. That's a piece of function. I want to see that. Okay, go ahead. Play. Yep. No matter what happens to this fin, where the bone attachments take place, they don't ever move. They're fixed. The fin moves, but the attachment points don't move. It's like when we run, we run, but, but the hip sockets don't move. They don't, they don't shuttle, they don't move. They stay right where they are, okay? Oh, wow, see that little white thing on there? Must be a smallmouth bass, right? Underwater with refraction, you'll see that on a largemouth bass. So if you depict one underwater and you put it there, good for you, okay? People say, oh, only smallmouth have that little, no. Oh no, here you go. Okay. All right, next one. So again, the, the, <coughs> the pelvic fin, this part right here, if you took a T-pin or something and lifted the skin up, it's not attached to the fin. You can actually lift it up like a hood a little bit. Okay, and you'll see how thick and massive that joint is. The outside rolls out. The inside stays up against the body, okay? Again, here's this angle, this direction, joint, 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 joint. If you take it and you line it up where the operculum bone plate comes together at the top, that's what it lines up with. Uh, salamoids, trout, salmon, char, that lines up with the eye. So there's a little tip for you. If you want to put that pectoral fin where it belongs, study whatever that's, crappie, bass, walleye, study that species and see where it lines up. See where the two joints line up, because they'll line up with something. Okay, and you have a good idea where it is. Okay? Again, the inside of that pectoral pocket, that deep cavity that sits behind there, I want to see that. Okay? This is the caudal shelf right here. The body actually starts right here. Okay, truck muscle, truck muscle. And this is nothing but the relates to the lines and the function of the feature. So, round circle, that boy or girl. Hey, you learned something today. Okay, go ahead. Oops. Oh, we can't hardly see that one. Am I in the way? Nope, just can't hardly see it. Okay, well, there's a horseshoe right here. That would be the female. Okay. So just the body. You know, we have these unique little shapes in here. There's the little subtleties that I want to see in the advanced master's division. Why is that shape there? Because the bone structure comes down the front half of the muscles end here on the pelvic fins, and that's where the ligament attachment is. It's right there. That's what creates that depression shape. So I want to see that. Okay? Again, when the dorsal's down, you don't really see it. But this is one little thing. Again, in the master's division, see how that comes up and then drops off? It was an accident that I took the photo and achieved what I want to see because it took the scaling out of there. So it allows you to see the sweep as it comes up. What most people do is they bring it right across. There's a drop and then a line. Okay, as it comes back to here, another drop. These one, two, three roots right here are also subdermal like the pectoral fin. When the fin lays back down, these sit back in the body. When it stretches up, they come up out of the body. Again, master's level stuff, okay? Oh, hit this, this is fun. So, my friend Jim Pellerin, he's the, he's the head guru fisheries biologist for the state of Maine. So, part of his job is they, they hired him to take care of Cabela's tank up there, their fish tank. So, we have all these bait fish, he throws them in the tank, he lets me go up there and film them. I film them from above, I film them from below. This is fish actually feeding. Watch how they move, watch how they turn. Now, the cool thing that most people don't pay attention to once they realize that there's enough food for all of them, they calm down. And then they feed slowly, okay, really slowly. <coughs> the purpose of this seminar is twofold. One is to let you know that you're no different than anybody else. We all have an ability to learn. We all have an ability to get better at what we do. 
That's purpose number one of this. So believe that to be true, because it is. The second thing is, I want to teach you how to look at things differently. That's all. So when you start looking at fish or birds or deer heads again, look at them with new eyes. Try to find things that you didn't see before. Okay? <coughs> There's two Atlantic salmon in here that were captured in the ocean. Okay? Because of the different density of water, when water gets colder, it's a different density. Fresh water has a different density than salt water. Um, Saltwater fish, like salmon, tend to move faster. They're a lot stronger, okay? So Jim said that they were shocking all the other fish in there. What happens when fish become really shocked, they start delaminating their scales, and then they get, you know, the, the mucal membrane, the, the slime coat, starts to become infected, and then they'll all start to die. So Jim cut their pelvic fins off, so they didn't have breaks, okay? To give the other fish an advantage, so they could slow down a little bit in the water. It's kind of cruel, but whatever. We'll just make more fish. I'm a former fisheries man. Okay. So when you watch how they move and you watch how they turn, look how efficient they are. Look what they do. Okay. It's not always a big dramatic story. It's it's usually little movements, less less you know stress on the body, more efficient stuff. But see see how hard he's trying to breathe. See how hard he's trying to push water back there? Because he used a lot of energy. He used a ton of energy. Okay? Fish get exasperated too. They're all gasping. Okay? Okay. So using math to leverage ribbons. If you did everything that you possibly could do to interpret and reconstruct the head on a, you know, as on a live fish, you know, you're telling the parts of the story that you would in training positions and how a fish articulates and the movement of the fins and the relationship of the story and lastly how the body would be in the position it would be in. The knowledge what took place, you know, is is a moment in time. It's a second. That's all it is. That's all you're telling me. Great taxidermy, not good taxidermy, <laughs> great taxidermy is when I can look at something and I can tell what it did one second before and what it was going to do one second after. That's when it's awesome for me. That's when you've captivated me and you're telling that story. That's when I get it, okay? If something's just posed, eh, okay. As long as it's pretty, you'll probably do okay. But if it tells me a story, I'd probably do a whole lot better, okay? Okay. You can achieve all this mathematical stuff, you know, that if you want to have a mid-place, second-place score, it's nothing but math. If you leave out certain things, your score won't be higher. If you do things incorrectly, your score won't be higher. But if you learn more things and add them in, your score will be higher. If you don't forget certain things, your score will be higher. That's it. Okay? Um, if you're incorporating hue values and details like we talked about, you know, about painting scales like that, yeah, that's all good stuff too because you're telling me, look how much more I'm doing, Rick. Look how much more I'm putting into my work. Okay. So I used these sheets from about 1995 on. And I used to leave them with everybody, you know. Um, and then I had a couple of associations tell me, it's a lot of information there. Okay, just, you know, so I stopped doing it. Um, but this is what I teach with. Okay, so 40% of the anatomy, the head, you know, how a transition relates to the lines. Does the head flow as it relates to the body, top and body, so if the uh, top and bottom. So if the mouth is open, I'm looking for certain flow lines on that fish. Um, is the head placement aligned or twisted? Uh, boy, I, I should have showed you something because it just popped into my head. But if you look at the top of a bass head, okay, as it comes down before the chlorethum bone, you know, you, you have the, the supraclerethum here, and then you have the coplaclerethum. Then there's the, like this little dent in the top of the head. Trout have it, catfish have it, everything. That dent in the top of the head lines up with the top of the collar section. Okay? I have not seen a fish yet where it doesn't. Not sharks, not eels, not any fish. It all does. Don't know why, but it does. Okay? If I see this line going this way, if I see it going this way, it just cost you a whole lot of points, okay? Because now your head is misaligned. So on the score sheet where it says front view alignment, wrong. 
Top view alignment, wrong. Side view alignment, wrong. Bottom view alignment, wrong. Okay? Just cost you a lot of points. That's a gimme. If you're going to put an artificial head on, just make sure that line lines up there. Okay? Do not take my word for it. Do not believe anything I say. You go out and prove all this stuff to yourself. Okay? So we'll keep going. The ithmus, which is the throat latch, is it attached to the head correctly? The ithmus has anatomy, two butterfly bones, the way that they attach them to the head structure. I want to see that. And in front of the butterfly bones, there's two muscular attachments that sit there. I want to see that anatomy too. But that's part of the master stuff. I'm just happy if you get the head in the right place in the professional position. Okay, does the top of the head and the bottom of the head have all the necessary features? Nair, skull nares, pores, mandible pores, receptors, all the correct numbers for the species. I want to see all that stuff. Okay, does the mandible, the dental bone, the maxilla, the top of the head, the maxillary, the side plate, does it have the correct shape and anatomy? Because all that stuff shrinks and people don't rebuild it all. Okay, keep going. Okay, the lower gullet tissue, that soft tissue in it, does it have the correct state? Does the branchostegal uh, rays shape and position ref reflect the proper function of the movement of where it is at that stage? Just because you can doesn't mean you should. You open up the mouth doesn't mean it's correct. Okay, the bone plate around the joints and the hinges are correct. Open mouth stuff, we're building this stuff here. We'll move up a little. Okay, I'm is sorry. the, huh? Did I go too high? Uh, no, you're right there. Is the lower interior mouth tissue realism correct or present? Because sometimes people, you know, they'll paint it right, but there won't be the tissue in there. They didn't rebuild it. The Vollmer teeth patches. So Char, uh, the Salvinus family, they don't have Vollmer teeth. Okay, trout do. Brown trout, you know, their series crosses over. Rainbow trout, they have a series that are next to each other. So even the Vollmer teeth, have specific anatomy, okay? Uh, the gill raker positions, when the mouth is open and it's feeding, the rakers come up. It's, I guess, to protect the gill arch. I don't know, fish can't answer that question for me. But when you video them underwater and they're feeding, bang, they come up, okay? Uh, does the rudiment attachment correction point of the body as it relates to the arch of the filaments realistic? Okay, so what does all that mean? So the gill filaments on the inside of the body if the lower jaw is distorted, the rudimentary placement of the arch is going to collapse. It's going to be wrong. And if it's going to be wrong, then the bronchostegal rays are going to be wrong. Okay, so you have to take a live fish, okay, catch it, you know, take it, put it in your hand, and put your finger down on his tongue, and just look inside there and look where things are. Study it. Watch it. Watch what the bronchostegal rays will do. Push on the tongue. That's what you got to do. Don't not the jaw, it's the tongue. That's what makes all the muscle structures work in there. Okay, gum tissue, is it correct? Or does it display teeth, pa teeth patches correctly? So, a lot of times people will make teeth really big and really pronounced on a fish. If you look at most reference pictures of live fish, you don't really see their teeth. Okay, you'll see the, the roof teeth, the filamore teeth, you'll see the vomer teeth. Sometimes you can see little teeth on the tongue. But usually all the gum tissue teeth, you don't see it. Okay, when they're dead and it recedes in like 90 minutes and starts to recede, yeah, they'll pop through and you'll see them. Okay, when all the tissue's gone and the teeth are sitting on the dental bone, they look like piranha teeth. Sure, actually piranha have small teeth. Okay, the caudal shelf. You know, a lot of times when people are doing skin mounts, they'll stuff mache back there and it makes this big bulge as it hits the tail. That's not correct. There's nothing back there. Open it up. There's not even a muscle back there. It's just ligaments and tendons. Okay. Um, scale position. <laughs> this is one of my big pet peeves because I got caught for it one time at the Nationals back in the 80s. You get a skin on a fish and it all looks good, right? Then it dries and then some of the shuttling moves. Okay. When you're taxiing a fish skin, oh my gosh, what a pain in the neck that is because you got to try to make sure all the <laughs> shuttles are correct with each other. Because sometimes they'll be here, you know, like the scales will go like this, then all of a sudden they'll start to turn direction, okay? They'll start heading up rather than where they should be, okay? Watch for that. Um, there was a snake at the California show that should have got fatal flawed. I don't like fatal flaw on anybody because the person was brand new. They didn't know any different. Um, it was legitimately their first competition, but the skin was wet still. 
Okay? When you do a reptile and you do a snake, you've got to poke holes in the skin sometimes to let air get at it. If you don't let air get at it, sometimes the glue will take forever to dry. And that's kind of what happened. I mean, it'll dry eventually, but it, it, you know, they weren't ready for that. So I took their scales on the reptile and I straightened them all up. And I wanted to see if they noticed it. And they did, like right off the bat. And I was like, oh, that's kind of good. And I said, well, see how the rest of your scales are just kind of going all over the place? I said, don't do that. And the same thing with a fish, okay? We got a battery low sign up. Oh, okay, yeah, it's gonna die. Okay, keep her going. Uh, well, eye sets, okay. Correct size for the morphology and the fish, de uh, the fish depicted. So sometimes when a fish is a juvenile, the eye is gonna have one size to it, but yet, you know, we'll put the wrong size eye in there thinking, well, smaller fish, smaller eye. Fish grow into their eyes oftentimes. Usually when they hit around two and a half years old, that's about as big as their eyes ever gonna get. Okay, and then they kind of grow into it. Um, the correct shape of the sclera as it relates to the motion, that's master stuff. So if a fish eye is turning or rotating, I wanna see the sclera shape correct. Oftentimes people just, they start at the bottom and they make that sclera shape, but sometimes if the fish eye moves, the sclera shape starts, uh, starts almost horizontally and finishes almost vertically, and then it'll shift back, okay? Craftsmanship, the interpretation of anatomy as it relates to a live and dead fish. I'm looking for accuracy. We study dead fish. You know, a customer catches a fish, what, 10 minutes? They're going to look at that fish, maybe? Six minutes? You know, ding, ding, ding. They fight it for 20 minutes, 15 minutes. They get it in. Wow, that's awesome. That's cool. Take some pictures. Well, put it in the bag. Put it in the cooler. They take it out. Oh, it's dead now. Bring it to the tax nurse. We see it for a long time. Okay? We see it dead for a long time. So we study dead stuff. You've got to study live stuff, too. If you have Cabela's or Bass Pros or whatever, go there. Go to their little fish tanks. Um, Underfilling, overfilling, fingerprints, cracks, unnatural finishes, brush strokes, that's what I mean by that, or wrong textures, pinholes, ripped epidermis. Um, look, if you got ripped epidermis, take uh, wet 320 sandpaper and just dip it in alcohol and just keep rubbing it. It'll take the epidermis away without really screwing anything else up. Oftentimes, unless you're tubing a fish, there's going to be a seam. I may even know that there's a seam there. But if you do it convincingly, I'm going to reward you for it. Okay, I'm not looking like for you know, perfection, perfection. I just want it very convincing. But, you know, if your epoxy sculpt cracks because it shrinks a little or your fish wasn't dry and it cracks, and you repair that crack and I can see it, I'm gonna point you for it, okay? Um, the, this one here, uh, th that's no, yeah, we're gonna have problems right off the bat. If your fish stinks, I don't care how good your fish is. We're all done, okay, we're all done. Um, acceptable attachment, I mean, when we do stuff for museums, they have to be bomb-proof. I mean, they can't move at all, not even a little. I mean, they can't move, okay? So I, I expect the same thing. Exceptional detail, workmanship, craftsmanship, rebuilding, modeling, casting, so on and so forth. Open mouth work, you know, exceptional interior work, eye work, you know, all that good stuff. I wanna see all the good rebuilding stuff. Paint work, naturalness of application, you know, capture the essence of that fish. Look, everything in nature has a signature to it, okay? Put the bars where they go on a bass correctly, you know, the, the top bar on a bass, okay, so you have the edge of the operculum here and you have the eye right here and, you know, you have a little plate right here and so on and so forth. So what people do is they'll do a straight line. The top line is slightly arced on a largemouth bass, okay. The, the second one comes underneath this soft tissue and it comes down and there's this one, two, three little folds. Sometimes it hits the top one, sometimes it's in the middle between the two. It's not always perfect but it does start underneath that little tissue fold. And then where the maxillary bone is right here, the third one comes down off that maxillary bone. <coughs> I've seen guys at the World Show not have it in the right place, okay? It just happens, okay? Presentation of the fish, capturing the essence, the beauty of it, enhance the display. I don't want your base to overwhelm the fish. Is your concept understood? Sometimes I look at what people do, I don't get it. That's my personal opinion, I just don't get it. But if it takes away from the, the fish, yeah, I have to take points away. I can't give you any. Okay, the movement natural to what the fish is doing, composition and balance, that's a whole other seminar. Okay? Uh, the base work as it enhances the, the scene of the fish. Again, don't let the base take away from your beautiful fish work. That's what I really want to see. Is there a good demonstration of artistic use of color and balance? 
There's a psychology behind color, and if you use colors correctly, it makes you feel good, makes things look good, you know? Okay, master's work, you know, true preparator stuff, remarkable effort. Was this a difficult species or pose? California had this little itty bitty tiny goldfish. You ever mount a goldfish? Pretty tough. Pretty tough for me. Okay, if you try to mold one, the weight of the silicone collapses it. Pretty tough. And this young fellow at the California show, well, he nailed it, pulled it off. He even said, I took four other goldfish, I took all their fins off, and I only put the good fins back on. Okay, so I gave him some points for that. Uh, deep knowledge of the species. Uh, trout have a specific shape of their adipose fin. Char have a different shape. If you show me that, oh, I'm going to give you points for it, for sure, because I'm looking for it. Um, does the artist show anything that can, can be considered above and beyond exceptional fish work? So when I look inside the mouth, you've really gone crazy. You've really put all the anatomy back in. You've really hit all the soft tissues on the bone plates. Yeah, I get it. During the score sheet, you're supposed to do that anyways. But if you really did it all at the end, I think it's exceptional because it is. I don't see it all the time, so it's exceptional to me. Okay? And then you end up with your grade. Okay? And that's it. Look. I have, I don't know, 1,200 hours of underwater fish film video with me. Okay, so when we're doing a critique, if you want to see some of it, we can do that. Um, I have two hard drives. I'm actually missing one of my hard drives. I probably left it in my haste. Um, but I have, I don't know, pretty close to 20,000 of my own reference pictures here with me. They're all live fish. I will not take a picture of a dead fish. Okay, we will not do it. Um, it's hard enough when we're taking pictures out of water because it's not what they're doing anyway, okay? Their body shape changes too, okay? Because hydrodynamic pressure makes them shape differently. So this has been my presentation for you all. And I don't know what you're gonna take away from it, but hopefully what you take away from it is it's all okay. There's more work to do, okay? There's always more work to do. Never a destination, always that journey to get to where you wanna get to. Break a head down. There's only so many bone plates there, okay? Work on getting the maxillary correct. Work on getting the top of the head correct. Uh, learn something new about a fin that you didn't see before. If you can do all that, oh boy, your work's gonna get so much better, for sure, okay? Thank you, thank you, thank you.